Welcome back to another episode of 666 Seconds of Murder. That means each one of these videos is less than 666 seconds or 11 minutes and 6 seconds. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. We're going to the University of Idaho and we're talking about Hannah Cleary. What happened to her? Remember, though, with all my videos, these are for informational purposes only. These are just my opinions and speculation. I'm not saying anybody's guilty of anything. We're just talking about something that interests the both of us. So since I've been doing videos on the Idaho four crimes, I've seen people in the comments asking me to do a video on Hannah Cleary. Now, I wasn't very familiar with her story, so I've had this in the back of my mind for a while, and I just posted a video yesterday on Hunter Lindau, and in my research of that, Hannah's name came up in the Google searches. So, as you may know, there is a part of this story that is a big no-no to discuss on YouTube. So I'm going to have to do the best I can and be a little creative with the words. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the video is intended to draw attention to Hannah's story. And if the YouTube gods decide to take it down, then that would fail miserably. And we don't want that. Now, Hannah was born November 13th, 2000 in Boise, Idaho, and was the second of three children. Now, it seems the family moved around quite a bit because she lived in Washington, Texas, Wisconsin, and Illinois. She graduated from Meridian High School in Meridian, Idaho in 2019, and that appears to be a suburb of Boise. Uh, interesting how so many people in this story, in the Idaho Four, come from that Boise area. And I get it, it's a, it's a large city in a state with a lot of small towns, but it's still interesting. Now, she was an English major at the University of Idaho and quite the bookworm. Uh, and I can appreciate her love of English since I'm a writer and I have been buried in books since I learned how to read. Uh, she was also minoring in Spanish and planned to get her master's in library science and she was also employed at the university library. So for a bookworm, that had to be like a dream come true. Now, unfortunately, Hannah's body was found in her small Moscow apartment after she had passed for three days. Now, that is such a sad part of this story, to think she felt so alone to do what she did and that no one even realized she was gone for those three days. That's just sad. Now, we've been told the official cause of death was that she ingested a lot of over-the-counter sleeping meds. Uh, now, anyone who has suffered from depression can relate to that feeling of just absolute despair. Uh, most people can get themselves out of that funk, but some fall prey to the demons, and sometimes they take you down a path that you just can't come back from. Now, I lost my best friend, Tim, to that back in 20, uh, 2002, and I've never fully recovered from that. Uh, based on the note he left, the despair was definitely heavy in his heart. Now, I know there have been rumors going around about Maddie Mogan and that she shared a dorm with Hannah for one year before this happened. Now, since Hannah was very studious and somewhat plain looking, uh, she was bullied by Maddie and her friends. These rumors claim that they tormented her about not looking like the sorority girls and for choosing to study instead of party. It's very unfortunate that this kind of stuff happens, that somebody like Hannah, who was a very pretty girl, but she was made to feel bad about herself compared to the other girls with more conventional good looks, for lack of a better way to describe it. Now, I recently did a True Crime Deep Cuts with Blogger Girl, and she told a story about when she was in college and that she had dealt with some sorority girls that treated her really badly and because she wasn't part of that scene. And Hannah wasn't either. So we've heard those stories about how this kind of thing happens to a lot of girls in their teenage and young adulthood. So very, very sad reality. Now, there was an Instagram post from Maddie that received a comment after the Idaho Four crimes happened, 
And remember that Hannah passed in February of 2022, about seven months prior. And the post read, quote, you deserved everything that happened to you, especially what you did to that poor girl. You elitists are all the same. I'll be reserving my spit once they properly bury you, unquote. Now, that is just absolutely awful. But this is what started the conversation, at least in the public, about Maddie and the bullying accusations. Now, do I know that Maddie and her friends bullied this girl? I have absolutely no idea. But those rumors seem to come from multiple people claiming that she wasn't the most pleasant person outside of her circle of friends. Some have speculated she may have been the main target in the Idaho Four crimes because of that. And I really don't know. And I don't want a victim shame here, but we can't put these victims up on pedestals forever. I mean, they were real people. And if they're going to try to get to the bottom of this horrible crime, they just need to unearth whatever they need to. And that means digging up some negative stuff, then so be it. I mean, that's what you got to do. And even if Maddie and her friends bullied Hannah, that is obviously no reason to exact violence on her the way that was done there on King Road. I mean, bullying is absolutely wrong. Shouldn't be tolerated, but vigilanteism is not the answer. Now, the story about Hannah Cleary is a very sad one. To think that a young woman with aspirations to get her master's degree and to work in a library due to her love of books would do something like what happened here is absolutely heartbreaking especially for me, a fellow lover of books and all sorts of literature. I never had those aspirations that she had, but I think I can relate to it in a certain way. Now, if you're, ever, if you're watching this video and you need help for mental health issues, please seek it. In most areas of the United States, you can dial 988 or text that number and someone will come on to talk to you. So please don't let those negative feelings uh, get unchecked. There's no shame in reaching out for assistance. That's what it's for. And I know my friend Tim, who fell victim to that, never reached out to me or anyone else about this. He kept it bottled up inside and decided to put an end to his misery. If he would have known that at his funeral, there were so many people there that there were people standing up in the back he wouldn't have probably done what he did. Most people don't realize how many people that we touch in our lives. And I bet if he knew that, he might not have taken his life back in 2002. Again, I'm not saying Maddie is guilty of bullying Hannah, but I wanted to do this video for those of you who asked, and I wanted to mention those accusations. Please keep that in mind the next time you formulate your own opinion here. And just remember, Hannah, and the next time you feel depressed, don't swallow those feelings. Find someone to talk to. She was a sister, a daughter, and a friend to many. And her father publicly stated on social media that he didn't think anything happened other than what was reported. So take that for what it's worth. I'd love to see your uh, comments on this one. It's an interesting case. Very sad. And it does have some ties to the Idaho Four because of Maddie. So I thought I would bring this to you. I do want to take the time to thank the members of the Horns High Club. You guys are awesome. I appreciate that support. And I appreciate all you guys that watch these videos. And we'll see you next time for another episode of 666 Seconds of Murder.